It is one of the greatest engineering feats of all time. A miracle. Built 600 years ago by a goldsmith with no training as an architect. The dome of the Florence Cathedral. Impossible. He constructs the dome at a time where the technology should not have permitted it. It just should not have been possible. Constructed of over four million bricks, weighing 40,000 tons, it's the largest masonry dome the world has ever known. Yet the methods used to build it remain a mystery. The builder didn't write anything down and he didn't leave anything behind. And Without the use of modern machines or materials, the dome is still the largest of its kind in the world. It's an icon shrouded in mystery because no one knows exactly how it was constructed. Certain features of the dome stand out. It's in the shape of a pointed arch with eight sides rising to a central point, topped by an enormous marble lantern. But there is more to it than meets the eye. The exterior tiles conceal walls containing over four million bricks. And what appears to be a single solid structure is actually two domes, one inside the other. The interior dome covers an open space nearly half the length of a football field, while the outer shell rises 10 stories atop cathedral walls themselves 170 feet high. How did the steep brick walls hold together without collapsing? A structure. It's like a work of God. But the dome is the work of a man. One of the most elusive and enigmatic geniuses of all time. Trained as a goldsmith, he had no experience in architecture or building. Yet he took on what seemed to be impossible keeping 40,000 tons of masonry curving through the air without caving in to the floor below. Experts are still trying to understand how he managed to defy gravity. He constructs the dome at a time where the technology should not have permitted it. How is it possible that he built the thing when he did? It just should not have been possible. He left behind no notebooks, no drawings, no blueprints for later generations to study. Massimo Ricci, professor of architecture and engineering at the University of Florence. Ricci has spent 40 years of his life trying to understand. It's a direct relationship with the way of thinking that existed outside the norm. Ricci's dome is one-fifth the size of Brunelleschi's but still huge. You're trying to do is to put yourself into the mind of the architect. Trying to find the secret of the dome is trying to find the secret of Brunelleschi. The search for that secret begins in the years just before the Renaissance. At the dawn of the 14th century, a kind of medieval arms race is raging between Florence and other emerging city-states, like Siena and Pisa, each trying to outdo the other by building bigger and bigger cathedrals. In 1293, the city leaders of Florence form a committee to oversee the construction of a new cathedral. For inspiration, the committee looks to ancient Rome, in particular, to the classical temple honoring all Roman gods, the Pantheon. It was famed for its unrivaled dome, made of poured concrete. But such engineering technology had been completely erased by centuries of war. And it's the accepted wisdom of the time that no culture will ever rival the Romans in the building arts. Florence is determined to surpass all architectural glories, past and present 
Through the 1300s, the Cathedral Committee's vision for Santa Maria del Fiore keeps expanding. They eventually create a crossing space which measured 143 feet 6 inches across. Today, in the 21st century, it would be difficult for us to cover, to roof such a vast space. In the 14th and 15th centuries, theoretically, it should have been impossible. A mural depicting the cathedral years before the dome was begun shows what the committee had in mind. In the 14th and 15th centuries, theoretically, it should have been impossible. An enormous pointed dome with eight sides meeting at the top. There's no question it's going to be spectacular. There's just one catch. No one knows how they're going to build it. Medieval technology relies on wooden frameworks to hold the masonry until the final piece is put in place. The two sides pushing against each other allow the structure to stand on its own. This method is known as centering. In the Middle Ages, if we're building a vault, okay, we build that wooden framework. We put our blocks, our bricks on top of it. We wait for the masonry to dry. Then we make the sign of the cross, pull the wooden framework away and run like hell because the failure rate on most of the, these vaults was about 50%. If they built it, it would have been enormously expensive. Just building the wooden framework to support the masonry would have taken hundreds of trees, years of construction, and huge amounts of money to keep curving walls in place as they rise. You're taking a project that you knew fully well you did not have the technology to complete. By the time Filippo Brunelleschi is born, the cathedral has already been under construction for 80 years, with no solution in sight to the problem of the dome. Brunelleschi first attracts public attention in the year 1401. Just 23, he enters a competition to decorate the most revered building in all of Florence. the baptistry. For centuries, Florentines, including Dante and the Medicis, have been baptized here. Following the competition, the disappointed Brunelleschi leaves Florence. Little is known about his life for the next 15 years, but it's clear he spends time in Rome, studying the ancient monuments. Some believe he's already preparing himself for a future challenge building the dome on the Florence Cathedral. Working on the model, the Americans will be confronting the key mystery of the dome. Until the curving walls connect at the top, what keeps them from falling to the ground? And what magic did Brunelleschi use to defy gravity? By 1418, more than 100 years after work had begun, the enormous cathedral is almost complete. It's bigger than any other in the world. But without a dome, it is in danger of becoming the world's largest joke. It's clear the people of the city were worrying about this problem. All the Florentines were talking about it. They knew very well that they risked looking bad in front of their rivals. They realized that building has got to the point where they cannot put off any longer how they're going to build this. And so they put forth a competition uh, saying uh, that whoever has any ideas about how on earth we can do this, uh, we're open, it's sort of answers on a postcard, please. They didn't have any idea what they were going to do. Non sapevano che pesci prendere. Proposals for the dome come pouring into the committee but they all share a fatal flaw. They depend on using wooden framework to keep the bricks in place during construction. Only one candidate promises to build a freestanding, self-sustaining dome. He tells the committee he has figured out a way for the dome to stand on its own, 
even as it is curving inward. How could that be possible? What will prevent that structure uh, from simply sliding out and caving in as we're building it? But there is a problem. The 41-year-old Brunelleschi has never built anything. I have the credentials, I have the know-how, I have the inspiration. Has never built anything. Who now steps forward and says, look, this is really the climax of the entire two-century construction history of the church. Who is this man to actually design the structure? And I, would you have trusted him? Problem. I mean, I would not have. Perhaps Brunelleschi's supreme self-confidence impresses the committee because he clearly does not have all of the problems worked out in advance. Because he clearly does not have all of the problems worked out in advance. Brunelleschi's supreme self-confidence impresses the committee. That he could only figure out as the work was in progress. Filippo, be being extremely secretive and not wanting anyone else to know his plan, said, I'll show you how to do it when you give me the job. Give me the job and I'll begin doing it. And you'll see that it works. Everyone else had shown uh, his plan. Brunelleschi refused. I already see it built. He said, I know how to build it. Only I know how to build it. I've studied the ancient Roman structures. I already see it built. Uh, and, and so they said, well, you have to tell us something. So he said, I already see it built. Bring me an egg. And he said, I already see it built. Imagine all of these eminent master masons from all over Europe trying to get it to stand upright. So they give the egg to Brunelleschi and say, show us what you mean. And, and uh, Brunelleschi says, yes, I already see it built. And you would be able to build the dome if you know what I know. Ari, who tells this story in the 16th century, uses a very vulgar term. Uh, he says, I already see it built. Brunelleschi keeps his idea secret for as long as possible, asking the committee to trust him. They say, well, we could have done that too. And uh, Brunelleschi says, I already see it built. Had he told the assembled company his secret, it would have been something that they wouldn't have understood. In April 1420, the committee comes to a decision. They choose Brunelleschi to build the dome. If he ever was going to have a moment of doubt, I think that would have been the one, because he would have seen up close and personal the magnitude of the task that literally lay before him at that point, because he would have looked across this chasm, this yawning gap. He must have, at some level, gulped and thought, am I going to be able to do this? Uh, broke the egg's ass. Lifting the building materials 170 feet to the work platform above. Technologically, the means did not exist. The rota mania, okay, or as the great wheel, which was a large wooden wheel that looked very much like a modern gerbil cage, inside of which human beings would walk, causing the wheel to turn. And as that wheel turned, it would coil a rope. Okay, and that coiling would gradually then lift an object based on the lifting power of the people who are actually walking inside. He invents a hoist that uses oxen. In 3,000 years of engineering, no one had ever done that. He pushed beyond a boundary uh, that no one else had crossed. No one else had even got to that boundary. Brunelleschi crossed over it. The oxen could walk all day long in the same direction, keeping materials flowing to and from the workplace above, lifting nearly 40,000 tons of material up to the worksite. Brunelleschi crossed over it, had solved the problem, massive walls together to form the world's largest dome. Five years into the project, the bricks, by design, start to curve inward without a wooden framework to hold the weight. And the whole thing could rotate, and all of this brick could fall in. The time had come for Brunelleschi to share part of his secret plan with the world. I already see it built. The walls may be strong, but for the dome to work, they must meet together at the top. Brick by brick, 
the walls of Brunelleschi's dome rise until they meet at the top, nearly 300 feet in the sky, and the dome is complete. Massimo Ricci has now been working on his dome longer than it took Brunelleschi to build the original. His model will remain an open laboratory for those studying Brunelleschi's methods. Ricci, unlike his hero, will never see his work finished. And it's wonderful to think that he saw it completed. He was able to look at it. He was able to walk past the building and think to himself, I built that, I did that. People need works that can speak to them of their own capacity to dream. Brunelleschi's Dome is perhaps the biggest of those works in the history of world art.